Just like the old days were starting after seven. So we know it's not post COVID, so thank you. Thanks for coming. We were snowing this afternoon and we were despairing like, ah, it's gonna be another event where just the staff are here. And we try to humor our speakers so they want to come back. But we are very pleased to have Eric Goro here. And I'm going to give a formal introduction in just a minute. I just want to mention a couple of things. If you haven't been here before, the bathrooms are in the basement. They're not here. Elevator, basement, turn left. Two to come back to this floor. Next Thursday, March 23rd, we will have a, a pianist here, a concert in this room. So that's Thursday, March 23rd, 7 p.m. David Childs will be here. He trained at Berkeley School of Music. Um, plays jazz, plays classics, plays standards, so it might be, it'll be fantastic. That's what it is. And that'll be right here. Seven o'clock, events are always free. They are handicapped accessible, pass the word. If you know people who might like to hear about that, check the Athenaeum website. All of our events are listed there. Or come in the building and ride the elevator. All the posters are in the elevator, so you can have the fun of going around the building. Let's see, that's it. Tara Goro is a large-scale artist whose murals have been involved in communities locally and abroad. A graduate of St. Johnsbury Academy, Tara traveled extensively before returning to Vermont. After earning a BFA at Johnson State College, she focused her attention on the Vermont landscape, its societal trends and concerns, to create pieces that she considers funny, poignant, and interesting. This exhibit, Surface Tension, uh, it'll be on display here through April. After the event, we will obviously raise the screen, flip the lights on, and we'll have a reception so you'll get to see the pieces if you haven't been in here yet. It features a series of paintings exploring the potential for a more just and sustainable society and food system. The centerpiece is a mural commissioned by the Caledonia Food Co-op. It's the piece that's on the back wall and the flanking pieces in the corner. You can see more of Tara's work at www.waltonic.com. It is a groovy website, and man, there's a lot of work on it. Also on display in this exhibit are photos by Phoebe, Phoebe Weisenfeld um, documenting community participation in creating the work. Please welcome Tara Gore. weather we've been having. I just got my power back. Yes. So I um, was able to finish this at my neighbor, my wonderful neighbor's house. And as soon as we were on the last slide, the power went out again. So <laughs> it's not, the, the production value of my, from my piece is um, low, let's just say, but it's going to be mostly a, a discussion, hopefully, <laughs> with some pictures and centerpieces. Um, so I just want to test this out, and it works. You can still hear me. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Hello. Um, I know most of you. I think <laughs> my name is Tara. Um, like uh, like Bob said. Thank you, Bob. Um, this whole exhibit is kind of the brainchild of um, Celia Jack who was at. <laughs> And while this is not a Caledonia Food Co-op event, it is existing because of a grant that she got for that. Um, as some of you know, we're trying to make a co-op happen in St. J. Um, and so we decided to bring a community art element into it to get people involved, spread the word, just talk about what we're trying to do, um, why it might be a good idea. Um, so I'm just going to start by talking about before I talk about the actual mural we worked on, I'm just going to give you an introduction um, about what my work has been over the last 10 or so years, um, and maybe a little earlier than that. I am a painter, I'm a, I'm a muralist, um, and one of, the, one of my very first memories I have is of my dad painting set design uh, for a community theater. <laughs> And I remember looking up and seeing all these little colors next to each other, and then you stood back and it was a tree. And I thought, I was like six, and I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. So I've always wanted to paint big. Um, 
when I went to when I went to college, I was studying e ecology um, and philosophy and whatnot, and um, I I just needed to release some art, so I um, decided to start tagging a parking garage right next to my door. Where <laughs> so this is technically vandalism, <laughs> um, but there were a lot of people who started getting really interested, and we all started making the, the um, we called it the parking gar garage beautification project, <laughs> and soon it was filled with all of these beautiful uh, colors <laughs> and messages, and it wasn't just graffiti, it was like hope, and you know, um, like care about the earth. Um, <laughs> and people found it a safe space. I remember running into people there who would just go up there to hang out. Um, eventually it was all painted over in gray because we were middle school. But ever since then, I've always found it incredibly humbling and an honor to be asked to paint a wall. Now, I don't think the, the best paintings in the world have been commissioned, but I think that um, being asked to paint a wall and actually getting paid for it is like a, beyond a dream come true. Mm. So thank you for asking me, Celia, to paint this wall. Um, with people. So um, I'm just gonna move along. Sorry, I tend to be a little verbose. Oh gosh, I just turned it off. Okay. I just press that. Ah! So <clears throat> I'm just gonna talk. Um, I, I love making art, but there's something really special about painting murals. It's, um, I feel like the mural itself becomes its own kind of character in a setting where people interact with it. Um, so even those murals that I painted that are mostly painted by me, I feel like they're, the interactivity I have with passers-by um, add to it. So this is a mural outside of the per Turning Point Center in Burlington. And it is also outside of Migrant Justice, Black Lives Matter, and um, the Vermont Workers Center, I believe. Um, and so input, even though it was generally um, aimed at describing the 12-step process out of addiction, um, there are a lot of different elements in it that people uh, added when they passed me by and talked to me about it. So you might be able to see some. Um, also, I had I, I got this commission because I had designed the general um, shape of it, but then I believe the, I think the butterflies came later, and then there's a medallion right here. This isn't a land there, is it? It is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> okay. There's a, a medallion um, here, and this man right here was walking by, with um, and with a dog, and he came and talked to me about how he got out of addiction with the help of this place, and then he showed me his medallion. So like little things like that um, were added uh, later on. Community members helped paint in the bottom, but um, I guess what I'm trying to convey is that even if I'm painting most of it, it's a very like I feel like. Um, I try and be receptive to what the public wants, and I feel like um, public art should be more of a collaboration. And also, um, it's not just about what I want to say, it's about what, they, what somebody they might want to see, too. Um, so I've been doing paintings with uh, young children for much of my career, as well as just doing my own paintings. A lot of them end up being paint by numbers. Um, this was a, a project up in Craftsbury for the elementary school sign. Um, I'll just continue. Oh, one of the very first, <laughs> this is a really dark and weird picture, and I'll explain why. Um, one of the first community collaborations I did, did with children was um, on, a, on a trip. It was a voluntourism trip. Um, in Swaziland, we were building a school, and I ended up injuring my forearm, and I couldn't 
build bricks <laughs> anymore. Um, so I bought some paint at the hardware store and then we just started painting. And um, this was inside a schoolhouse in um, a little village called Baban where um, there are a lot of children who uh, are, do not have um, many family members. A lot of them are um, orphans because there's a rampant um, AIDS epidemic happening there about, anyway. Um, and I believe still, but probably not so much anymore, hopefully. This was 2007. Um, anyway, so I didn't take any pictures <laughs> when I was there. I didn't have a camera. And um, so this is one of the first murals. Um, and then it turned out really great. Everyone worked on it, the kids, um, adults. And then, um, so this is the schoolhouse we built. And this is us <laughs> mixing concrete without any respirators. Um, <laughs> but it's, while we're doing this, we have another mural in the works. And it's kind of a, um, here's the final piece. Um, this is, it was just a bunch of kids kind of being like, oh, and we should do this, and like, add that, and, and then all of their handprints around it, of course, yeah. it was a kid's mural. Um, anyway, we, they, it was great. Um, it was a lot of fun. And so, uh, I found it, sorry, I just thought it was a great, um, anyway, it, it just seemed like a really great way to get people together. So, in 2013, um, I responded to an RFP, a request for proposals for the city market um, entryway, um, and I believe by some fluke, I mean, I don't know, because I usually don't get the thing, um, it, I, I don't have the most refined style, but um, they, they asked me to paint it. I, I think only about four people applied, but I'll take it. <laughs> Um, so I, for about a month and a half in late fall uh, 2013, um, as many people walked by, <laughs> and I had my little cordon off area, I painted this um, this mural. But I think the average temperature was like 50 degrees, so I was like, um, yeah, it was it was quite an experience. And I also it was supposed to depict. Um, a very kind of Mediterranean looking Burlington, but like <laughs> slope. <laughs> um, but I, uh, it was kind of, um, it was interesting, it was a quite an interesting experience because people talked to me almost the whole time. <laughs> and it was really hard to focus. Oh. Um, <laughs> I ended up asking them to put a little sign saying, like, please, she has to pay me, dear God. <laughs> um, and, but also, like, many people were very supportive, and some people were not. And I, you know, it, it's a lot when you have to, like, when you're in your early 20s, and you're just doing this thing, and, like, people are just, like, being like, you or something. <laughs> and you're, anyway. Um, but also, through some of those constructive criticisms, or I could just say criticism, um, I learned also that uh, whatever I put on the um, canvas or the wall is going to be immediately interpreted somehow or another. And it's not necessarily my job to have the vision, it's my job to um, manage expectations. So I learned quickly that I needed to suggest things before actually painting them, because I couldn't paint it all at once. Um, so, for example, uh, for example, don't just paint white people. Like, don't just start with white people. Make sure you paint a lot of different types of people. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you might get called, um, uh, what, what was the word? Uh, <laughs> Racist. No, no, it wasn't. Um, it was like, bourgeois. It was bourgeois. But anyway, uh, I ended up kind of becoming friends with that person anyway. So, um, <laughs> sorry. But you know, it, it, it becomes a bit of a um, uh, what do you call it? Performance art, in a way. So painting a mural in public is performance art as well. 
Um, anyway, we can move on. Oh, this is, um, I'm just going to throw in a couple more. This is what I did with Jasper Hill. This is the um, creation of cheese inside a um, cow's digestive system. <laughs> so I really lucked out with getting clients who were kind of nuts. And they, they suggested these things, and I was like, yes! And then they would put me in touch with some scientist or another, and we would go through slides. So for example, these stars uh, up here are actual bursts of bacteria that you would find inside cheese to create the flavor profile. Um, these trees turn into flora that is also found inside of cheese. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I, I went a little nuts this winter. That was 2014. Um, just another, this is a memorial piece in Rutland. Um, we can go through a little quicker. I don't know how much time we have. Uh, also, this is a bit slapdash together. Um, we ran a bit out of time, or I ran a bit out of time yesterday with the power outage. Um, so, <clears throat> this is a storm drain hero project in Colchester. The health of the lake is in our hands. Don't worry, when we were painting this, there was plastic guarding underneath the, uh, the drain. Uh, this is um, something um, at the Frog Hollow Gallery in Burlington. People would come up and write suggestions for what I should draw, and um, this was just a chalk mural. So basically, people came up, like were invited to come up and say, hey, add this, or add this, or kids would even come and start drawing things. Um, and it turned into a whole crazy thing, so. Yeah, a lot of quotes. Um, all right, so just, to kind of round out, I have the, I do a lot of murals. They're usually very bright. I try and bring the whole rainbow in to them. Um, so um, this is just m me googling myself. <laughs> um, hoping for the best. So uh, that being said. Um, we're going to talk about the mural, I, with however much time we have, I hope you're, I'm not losing you and dragging you know, on too much. Okay, so for this mural, um, for the co-op, well, we wanted to, it was kind of like a mission statement for, um, like, why, do, why should people be excited about this or enthused? Why should they want a co-op in the first place? What do co-ops do for communities? Um, our mission is, to generally reduce fossil fuel use, fossil fuel use, <laughs> um, create more accessibility to nutritious, nutrient dense foods, um, locally sourced foods, um, more a, an, an ability to find less packaged foods, um, buying things in bulk so that we also reduce waste, and finding. Um, well, creating an environment where workers can be treated with respect, making um, livable wages. Um, and so, yes, that is the goal as I saw it in my um, perception of it. Um, so, I thought it would be cool to kind of create this Venn diagram esque shape. And I ended up finding the original sketch, and you can see it's, it's like, oh, there was a you know, if this is what we're moving towards in the center, and then we're kind of getting rid or not, or moving out of these things in the, in the edges. So, in my in oversimplified brain, it was like edge bad, like inner bubble good. <laughs> <laughs> and it ended up turning. I mean, of course, it's way more nuanced than that. As you all know, in order to make solar panels, we need to burn a bunch of fuel. Um, so, and then, uh, after much talk with Celia, we, um, edited it to co-op's liking, um, and I started drawing it 
outlining it on boards. And this is just my outdoor studio. Thank God for the good weather. Um, and started it. <laughs> As we went, I would just, you know, add the outline of something that needed to be painted, and kids were just on it. <laughs> and I injured my shoulder, and I was not feeling like painting very much at that time, and these kids had it under control. <laughs> and it was awesome. Um, and then it filled in, and it filled in so fast that we ended up having to get other pieces of wood just for them to go nuts on. Um, anyway, so yeah, that was the summer. Um, this was our little booth for the Caledonia Food Co-op, that's so I wanted to get downtown. These panels um, were also painted with second graders and they are, they somehow miraculously fit in that space. Um, and so, Another, <laughs> I just thought it was cool to get kids to do a lot of work this summer. Um, I ended up, uh, this is just another example of a community collab in Cabot, um, starting with this, this very sketchy sketch, and then another computerized sketch, and then what it actually, how we made it, we sketched it on, I had like amazing helpers, um, and then it just filled in, filled in, filled in, um, kids added their own little things. This, this girl um, had <laughs> recently memorized the, um, was it the Declaration of Independence? Anyway, she, or I'm, I'm not sure which one, but she, she decided to, to write that on the scroll that the bird had. <laughs> um, and then the actual, this woman right here who actually put it all together, Amanda um, Otto, Um, somebody thought it would be funny if she was the one reading the book. So, that's her. Um, and I, of course I had my wonderful helper, helpers, my mother and my dog, <laughs> of course. Um, and yes, this is the final product, and we painted this whole thing, and, um, Where I don't have a car. What's that? Where is that? This is at the rec field in Cabot. Oh, it's gorgeous. They have it used. They did a great job. I kind of was just like, I think that should be green. And then in the end, maybe put a little, a few finishing touches, but um, for the most part, it was done with the hands of children who were not the, actually, some of them were being paid, yes. Child labor. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, this is something we did at the uh, St. Jay's School, um, a welcome sign, but they were able to do the background however they wanted, and they really got into it. Uh, this is a welcome sign, and then these are, this is an alphabet mural. And then this is kind of the finished product, my trusty truck, and yeah, they did nice. But it was really cool, because this is like, Stuff you see in like the abstract expressionists in the, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> For <laughs> anyway, um, this is one another one we did in Cabot at the music festival, which I basically outlined. I, I wish I had a picture of it, but I was just like in go mode. Um, I got there, outlined like four figures, and then everyone just turned it into this. <laughs> like, they just made it happen, and I was kind of just like handing them brushes and like saying maybe blue or maybe red or something. Um, and I thought, is that the end? Oh, well, I thought that with all the snow this was a good little last slide. <laughs> <laughs> the ABCs of Outdoor Adventure, I think that was what's called. Cool. Um, and then, so yes, thank you. I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you especially, I mean, Celia basically hired me to paint a mural, and, um, or she actually hired me to do media, and then I realized I really am not good at that or marketing at all, so then she hired me, she changed gears and said, hey, let's do a mural together. 
So I just want to say thank you, Celia, and thank you, Greg, also for being the logistics man. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for um, having me here, um, Scott and Bob, and setting this all up. And thank you, Nelly, for, for making it look nice. <laughs> um, and yeah and mom for feeding us food and all the painters. If any of you painted during the summer, thank you very much and all the co -op. Well, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> and if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs> yes, I'm sure it's a stupid question. Hey. What kind of paint do you use for things Ooh. that are in the outdoors and are going to have the elements on them all the time? Exterior latex house paint. And that will last how long? Well, I have one that's just lasted 10 years. Oh. But it has been covered, but it is outside. Um, so, yes, ben, I, I, I like Benjamin Moore high build. Um, it's gone from like $50 a gallon to like $89 a gallon in the last couple of years. Um, I also clear coat it with, um, I actually, if, if, I, if it's out in public, I clear coat it with um, a barrier um, top coat that cannot be removed and then I spray varnish on it. So if there is any graffiti, it can be wiped off. Amazingly, I never had to do that. Um, but, so yeah. with um, this notion of starting from a small concept and then translating it into a big space, which in itself, I imagine, does something to the, the way it plays. And then also, some of the spaces are not just flat also. And, yeah. You know, like that one in Burlington, you have the, the perspective. Yeah, so I, I wondered if you wanted to talk at all about Yeah. I, I think for me, um, <coughs> having Photoshop really helps because you could just be like, oh, this is basically where, like, this is the wall and, you know, I need, I have this little bit of ledge to stand on, like, can I reach up there? No, I don't want to reach up into that heat. Let's just do it down here and make it easy. Um, I mean, honestly, murals are going to be seen from far away, but I want them to be also viewed from up close. So the over, I, I'm not super tight with like the actual, the overall um, composition. I don't plan it to a T. Most of what actually is interesting happens when we're actually painting it. When we're painting it. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, it's changed a lot from like the little sketch to here. We wanted to fill in more town, so that whole, this whole thing moved over here. Um, and so, oh, sorry. What was that? Sorry. I was going to ask you, is it very unusual to paint murals the way that you do as like a collaborative effort? I mean, are most muralists out there on their own and not really taking in the environment around them and suggestions from passersby? Or? Honestly, I don't think so. I think, I think, I, I feel like it might be impossible to like drown it out or drown anyone out. But um, I, I know quite a few painters who solicit advice. I know uh, most of the painters I know project things, so they're a little tighter with how like their original design wants to be put on the wall. Um, so uh, I have never projected a mural like, like, I will grid it out, you can see these lines, so that we just get a general idea of, like, proportion. But, um, yeah, I, I honestly don't know, but I find it, like, I find it the most fun part of mural making, yeah. to be like, somebody's like, hey, it's my birthday, like, can you throw on this <laughs> a dog or a birthday cake? And I'm like, yeah, I need it'll be a little secret. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Anyway, I've um, never heard of anyone like doing that, so I think it's really cool. I'm sure, I mean, because there are a lot of muralists who do just 
ask people to help, and they're like, hey, this green is red, and mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure they do. And do you have, I'm sorry, one last question, I'll shut up. The, the favorite, like, do you, cities that you go to that, like, they, they have the best murals here, or like, Philadelphia is known for its murals, right? And, I mean, are, do you look at other muralist arts to inspire yours? Is that is there a mural tour that you've ever organized or would be willing to do? Or you know. I mean, new new murals pop um, pop up all the time, and just going back into Burlington after the years, I, there are all these new murals there now, hmm. and it's pretty cool. Can I just cut in and say that we're looking for a wall to put Tara's mural on in St. J to start. St. J being a mural destination. Yeah. So you haven't seen the whole thing. It will be shortly unveiled. But if you know someone who has a beautiful wall, she's painted it so that it will exist well outside, right? Yes. Yeah. It is. And you want it in a high traffic. Race. Yeah. Where, why not? Where people right. can see it. It's a beautiful thing. And I think, I think next to having a co-op, which would be the coolest thing, starting to have murals in St. J would really be cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anybody who can help me. You get that Amy? <laughs> um, but to answer your original oh sorry, and one second. I would suggest the best mural destination, Mexico City. Ah <laughs> hands down. <laughs> um, Greg? Uh the whole thing started with the idea of public art, and you talked about the garage that you painted, you uh, tagged at the beginning of your story, and you seem to be telling the story that once you did it and people were living with it, it had this, uh, this effect, and it had a positive effect, and people started to congregate there, so my question is, much to the chagrin of the campus officer. Once you've done these murals, do you collect any uh, information about how it's received, how the ongoing public is relating to it, and the impact it's having in its environment? That's a really good question. Um, I found that, um, well, a lot of people are like, oh no, I don't want to ruin it or whatever when they're walking by and I'm like heckling them. I'm like, you want to paint? You want to paint? And I like, you know, especially when we were down at the depot square that day, um, a lot of people are just like, no. And then they're like, oh, um, maybe, maybe I will paint a little bit. And they like start painting. And, it's, um, and then some of those people really, and I'm just going to go to this. Oops, this one in particular. This, it was a, a, like a music mural, and we were listening to music, and people like, were really getting into like, the designs on this guitar, and like, the designs that, like, what does music look like? And like, a lot of them were kids, and some of them were not kids. Some of them were like, older people who were just like, oh, it just feels so good to paint. And like, they just hadn't done it in a while. And, um, I felt like, sorry this sounds a little cliche, but like it was creating like a safe space where they weren't afraid to like look stupid or like be judged or, you know, feel bad <laughs> about themselves. I don't know. It's like, it was, it's like a little bit of expression. It's like putting your two cents in and like, you know. Um, so it was, I tried to, make it welcoming, but also I think the mural, and that's the intention of it. It's like, welcome, like, we want you to look, we want you to be part of this, and that's how I feel like, that I, whatever the energy or whatever the mural, like, hopefully gives off. It's like, whatever goes into it, it will project. Yeah, that's what I would say, that it's welcoming, yeah. you know, uh, and it's not, it's not uh, exclusive. Mm -hmm. where some art can be exclusive. Right. And, yeah, and my style is not, like, you know, classical. <laughs> Tara, how about if you get someone like me who has no artistic ability and they screw up on trying to do stuff? No. Do you erase it? Or? There's no such thing, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
the screw. Well, no, you can't. You can if, if like there's a big drop and you're like, oh no, it went over her face and there's this huge smudge. Like, yeah, well, all you need to do is let it dry and or wipe it off real quick. Or there's no. I mean, or it might add to something. Um, I want to find. I mean, <laughs> these these vines. I think somebody like. I, I'm not sure, but. I don't know, they just, like, these little things come out of um, accidents, I think. And I'm not, I don't want to say, like, oh, something's still pre-paid, and then they turn into mine. I don't know if that's true. I feel like I would be making that up if I said that. But I do remember, like, a lot of this stuff was accidental, and then you kind of just went with it. It's like jazz. I mean, right. it is kind of about jazz. Like, you make a off note, and then you're like, then you just go with it, and you keep playing that note, and then, like, now it's a song. <laughs> and that said, I think you've also set a tone where this isn't a place for cliches. You know, it's not that you have people just doing really safe, you know, lots of <laughs> Turn these lights on. I'm having a reception. <laughs> 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 